let's jump on to handout 8A. 8A was where we started out by deriving our fundamental time value equation, which says that the future value of cash is equal to its present value times one plus the interest rate, the interest rate that, that it's earning by, raised to the t, where t is time elapsed. And if we're looking at cash flow in and out of a project, we just rewrite that to say the cash flow we could pull out at the end is equal to what we put in in the beginning times one plus our interest rate raised to the time elapsed. Then through the magic of algebra, we could solve this for the interest rate, or we could solve this for the present value, or we could solve this for the time elapsed. And we could also use natural logs, which are typically denoted like that. And either one is going to give us the right answer. So we sort of beat this equation to death algebraically, just solving for every possible thing we could. This is the only version of the fundamental time value equation that I remember. Um, and then I just do the algebra as needed to solve for whatever I need to solve for. And we did look very briefly at simple interest rate, which we did not emphasize. And in general, we're always going to assume compounding interest, compound interest, unless it's specifically stated that this is a simple interest rate problem. Okay, so must be specifically Okay, so that has always assumed compound interest unless it's specifically called out that it's simple interest. Okay, and we looked at graphically some of the differences between compound interest, compound interest clearly growing exponentially and simple interest grows linearly. And what makes our money grow faster? Two things as shown here. One is the more time we can let our money grow, the more money we're gonna have. We have time here on the x-axis and the value of our investment on the y-axis. So that's one thing that helps us, more, just more time. Second thing that helps us is higher interest rate here. So we see with the 15% interest, our money grows much faster. Okay, and a few good things to keep in mind in a compound interest world, which is typically our world. <clears throat> Whenever our investments are guaranteed, cash truly is an exponential function of time. You can see it clearly on that graph. And for a lender charging our percent interest, cash flow at t equals zero is her cash outflow. She commits now to receive hopefully a bigger amount of cash back at the future time TF. For a borrower who's paying our percent interest, cash flow zero is the pile of cash that she gets now in return for her promise to repay a bigger cash flow at some time TF in the future. And we had some terminology, which we've continued to use all the way through chapter 11b, and we will for the rest of the term. So when we're calculating R and we're going forward in time, we call that the interest rate. And when we're coming back in time, same R, mathematically the same quantity, but it's called the discount rate when we're coming back in time and solving for a PV. And the present value is sometimes called the principal or initial principal or initial investment amount. Future value is sometimes called the amount that principal will grow to. Then we looked at cash flow diagrams. As you know, I'm a big proponent of cash flow diagrams, time on the x axis. And for one participant in one project, we show the cash flows here. So these will be this participant's negative cash flows on the negative y axis and her positive cash flows on the positive y axis. And that was it for handout A.